Good morning, everybody. This is Richard back at you today after Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving and Black Friday coming up. Hide all the credit cards from your women's and you'll be in good shape to go. Black Friday's today, babe. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's too late. It's too late. Darn. It's too late. That's terrible. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, guys, we want to definitely uh, thank everybody for watching. We got Miss Teresa on the camera today. Uh, we also want to thank uh, some other people that's uh, Teresa is going to take over and do that for me. We want to acknowledge and, there you know, you happy Thanksgiving. But we got to go over here so we can show them this package that Dell sent us from oh, yeah, Louisiana. That's right, huh? and, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix this, but because I've never fixed this kind of stuff before. I think it's for like jambalaya, stuff like that. We've got a lot of stuff here. Oh, yeah. Turn that around. What is that? AT original yeah I'm not for sure what that was yeah but I mean he sent everything to do it all gumbo I mean for hush puppies yippee and this right here this rice yeah that's for um, gumbo I'm pretty sure jambalaya. jambalaya that's what it says Crayola okay. jambalaya mix also he sent me a shirt I guess it's yes the he house. sent a shirt also yes. but I mean might well come back down here and help us fix this because I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, definitely, huh? <laughs> no. And so... But that, that'll be some good. I, I think you can do a be, lot of things with that. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure that we can find somebody that can tell us how to fix yeah. it. But we want to give a big shout out to Kevin and Terry in Utah because they're pretty awesome guys. And, you know, even though we met them through our, our channel and stuff, we talk pretty much every day with us too, and yeah. and it's a really great uh, Relationship. friendship. Yeah, we definitely. So Ernie and Lisa down in are up in New York. Um, Want to give them big shout out. Yeah. Wayne or Dell, he sent us this stuff, and we had the pleasure of meeting. And we never knew who this guy was, but he always posts his Corvair Wild. Yeah, I remember and that. He just showed up out here, so now we can put a face to the name. So Abraham and um, his um, his friend Doreen, they're from New York also. Well, I think she's from a different place, but they still hang out because they like Corvairs and yeah. they do shows, and that's how they met. So that's pretty awesome, also. And and so and then we have somebody else, Lisa. And she lives in between Houston and Galveston. Galveston, yeah. And she drove all the way down here with this Ten hours baby. away. Yeah, ten, ten hours, hours away. away There's a story behind the car, definitely. There, there is. Definitely. So why don't you get started on this? Well, first I want to talk about this one really quick. Oh. This is the one uh, that we just got finished in our earlier video, uh, the mass airflow sensor issue, uh, blowing fluid out the vent, stuff like that. We've got... Everything fixed on it, water leaks. So we pulled the oil pan off, changed the oil pan gasket, got all the oil leaks fixed. This truck turned out really, really nice. I mean, really turned out really, really good. I'm We've really pulled happy stuff out, but it is super duper cold, it is cold, isn't it? 28 degrees outside right now, and the wind's blowing like 30. I mean, it's, whew. <laughs> I come out here to turn my instant, or my clean burn heater on, and uh, it wouldn't turn on for some reason. I'm panicking, running around, and thermostats clicking and stuff like that, and, uh, I have a call clean burn and uh, wait for them to call me back because I panicked so bad because it's so cold in here. <laughs> and uh, I'm not leaving the heater on at night like I did last year. I'm going to try to save some oil, kind of stretch it out a little bit longer. But um, I changed the thermostat batteries. The batteries in the it thermostat. Was uh, I mean, it was lit up working. You could hear it click and stuff. But the wire from the thermostat to the machine is pretty long. So I, I'm assuming the voltage wasn't getting there right or something when I turned it on. Put new batteries in it, clicked right on, so really happy. Lucky but anyway, you. let's get on Lisa. <laughs> yeah. Lisa's uh, really she's excited a to have part her car of in the, here. What is it? Pontiac? Uh, the uh, Firebird Fest. Firebird. Firebird Group. Uh, this is a 76 model Firebird. Uh, she had a brand new motor put in, a brand new transmission, had the rear end rebuilt. Motor is flawless, working fine. Had some oil leaks. Uh, we did do an oil pan gasket on it. Uh, it had one of them blue Felpro gaskets that was just leaking on all the corners. Uh, I went back with uh, just a standard quart gasket, sealed my corners and everything. looks really nice now. But uh, she had her tranny done too. 
Uh, she got it back. Uh, this constantly leaking. Took it back. Couldn't get the leak to stop. Come to find out, a bunch of pan bolts are stripped, uh, holes are stripped, and the case is busted where uh, one of the pan bolts uh, goes in. There's no way to put a Healy coil or anything in it. I mean, the, the case is basically no good. Also, she had the rear end done at the same time. Uh, I'm not sure what she paid to have the rear end done, but I'm sure it was big money. Uh, but when she picked it up the same day, it whined. She took it right back. Uh, whining and uh, they said that it, it would drive it for a while and it would quiet down well you know that ain't happening especially on gears if they whine they're gonna get louder they're, they're never gonna quiet down it never happens so we're gonna go in here and uh, see what's going on with the rear end I checked the backlash earlier uh, and this thing probably has an eighth of an inch backlash on it I mean it's it's terrible that's how much backlash that's got and that's got oil in it, so it's probably got more than that if it was dry. Uh, but she's got 100 miles on the rear end and it never quit whining, so we're probably not gonna be able to use the gears. Uh, we're gonna take it apart and look at it, see, but normally that kind of mileage, that kind of backlash, it's probably got some type of crazy little pattern on it and uh, something that we will fight and fight and fight and try to get the wine out of, so we're just not gonna do that. We're gonna go uh, find a set of gears and put in here because one reason, which, uh, we're going to change the gears because we're going to be putting a, an overdrive back in instead of the 350. We've got the overdrive already built over here. Already got that out, huh? Yep, got the 350 out. Hang sitting on, over I'm here on the bench. At the stuff up here. Yep, look at that. Just did the oil pan gasket. Yeah. It's so good. it turned out really good. Yeah. So no leaks. Clean, clean, clean. So we're going to be straightening up a bunch of things too under here. Going to put a cooler on there. I yep, going to put a big old Hayden cooler. Actually a 1404 we're going to be putting on there. It's a little big for the car, but stop and go traffic and stuff like that where she's at, you know, we want to keep the tranny cool because it's not going to be in lockup or anything like that to keep it cool. And she's just running a regular radiator. So. Well, and all the deals that she'll be going to. Oh, shows. yeah. Car show after car show, I believe. She travels a lot. Yeah. But this is the old 350 that she had built and put in. Uh, the bolt holes, some of the bolt holes are stripped. Don't even have a vent cap on it, but the case is busted right through here where there's no way to put a Healy coil or nothing in here. It's totally gone. I could probably weld it up, drill it out, Healy coil or tap it, I mean, and, and make it better. But, I mean, the time this I'd have in it. right here, too. Look at this. Where? Right there. No, that's just a... Eh, I don't think that's a crack. Is that, I think. A, is that a crack? No, no it's that's not. not a it's crack. just a seam. Yeah. Okay. But the I talked her into doing an overdrive because of being on the highway. She already went to the Firebird Fest once in this car. I think it's 70 miles an hour or whatever. It was 3,500 RPM. I mean, high RPM. So once we get the overdrive in, uh, we'll. I got a general idea. Probably a 373, 350 gear. Uh, we're going to be putting back in the car with the overdrive and lockup, so that'll bring the RPM down about 2,000, right in that area where it's really comfortable to drive at 70, 75 miles an hour. Now these cars ain't designed to cruise at 75 miles an hour. They were built designed to cruise at 55 miles an hour. So when you start driving these cars at a higher speed on the highway, you really got to make sure your steering is really good, your front end suspension, and all that type of stuff. Because I mean, I do a lot of these overdrive. Uh, units we transport a lot of them in the older cars and stuff we do yeah. a lot of that stuff so you have to replace the put a new detent cable on it tv cable a uh, new bracket we'll be taking this bracket here and modifying it uh, to where how we like it to work uh, we've got Drive our shaft work yep we'll have to take that on monday yep we got our key on power wire here we've got our fusible link here for a fuse to put in the in the line it's going to be a fitting for our cooler uh, adapter off the radiator so we can tie into our cooler. So we've got uh, our BNI 2000 stall that we're going to be putting in there. She paid for a stall on that one there, uh, but this to me is just a standard B35 torque converter. It's they're a little higher stall than factory, but they're they're not no 2000 2200. Does that even look like a new converter? I mean, it don't really, huh? So does that not make you want to tear that transmission down to see what she got? It literally? does. <laughs> I've got like five of these out there in the, in the trailer that's not tore down. 
I could tear it down and, and look at it and get some parts or something like that out of it. But we just don't do a lot of these. You know, the pump's worth more than the whole tranny. You know, if the pump's brand looks nice, put it on the shelf. Almost trash the rest of it. I mean, seriously, we just don't I just do a lot want to of them. see what they did. I mm -hmm. mean, because that converter is not new. Right. There's no way. No, not looking like that. Terrible. Well, this one's really nice. I did a really good job on this one, so I'm excited to get it put in. We got another job that just come in. Uh, same type of ordeal. Uh, it's been done twice by the same shop. Uh, something, the converter went bad. They put another converter in it without even cleaning the tranny out. Normally, when a converter goes bad, you have to take the tranny completely apart, clean every piece back, put it back together, put a new converter in it, because all you just trash is the unit. But this is a really nice truck. All original paint, chrome, but look in here. And we have known these guys forever. Yeah. I he mean, we've watched Jason grow up. Yeah, we really did. I'm pretty sure his dad was driving this. This is an LS swap. I'm not sure if it's a 5360. Uh, Four-wheel drive with a 400 tranny. They did a really nice job. They changed the frame under the bottom, the little uh, cradle. By the way, these motors bolt right in. There's a company out there that makes that. So, but the tranny's noisy. Uh, he took it back to the company and they said they all make a little bit of noise. And you know if a tranny's making noise, it's got a problem. Especially, <laughs> I, I haven't heard the noise yet. Uh, I haven't messed with it. I just brought it in and parked it because it got cold out here and stuff. So. But that's the job we're going to be doing. I might not even, I might tear that tranny down in a video just to see what it looks like, give us an idea what type, what he paid for. But when they're like that, I got a nice uh, 400 over here on the jack that come out of the pickup that we did a overdrive transfer. We put the overdrive in and pulled the 400 out. Oh, there it is. It's never been into. All original. I'd like to probably tear it down, build it back, and put it back in this truck. We'll just see how things go. But, uh, Got a lot to do, definitely. Hey, Annie. <laughs> Annie's excited. Her's the needy I, girl. Yeah. We got to get the unit in this today, get the cooler on it, then I'm going to move it over to this lift, do a drive shaft measurement. Uh, she's got a short 6 inch 350. If she would have had a 9 inch 350 uh, tail housing, the drive shaft would have fit right in. We wouldn't have to do it, done anything to it. But since it's the short one, uh, we're going to have to have some drive shaft work. So, got to cut it off. Up four or five inches and have it rebound so at least it's not four or five hundred dollars you know but it's still drive shaft work is drive shaft work we have no control over what they charge nowadays and nothing's cheap anymore mm -hmm. definitely nothing's cheap exactly but, but hey i want to thank you for showing up and hanging out we want to wish you guys another happy thanksgiving black fridays today run <laughs> they were early i can't promise they, yeah they're showing on the news everybody was already out early this morning but anyway, don't forget to subscribe, push your notification bell, and we'll see you shortly. Have a great day.